Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Exchange Show. I am your host, Bertha Oxendine. And as I say, I always want to thank God that we're here together again on another Exchange Show, that he has given us another day. I uh, would like to ask you to like and to share um, and invite someone to watch with us today. We have a great um, a great author here today with us, as we always have. I feel great authors, but this one today is another one as well. Uh, if you missed if if you missed the show today, you can also watch this episode on Roku TV the following week, and all the links you would need, including how you too can be a part of this networking community. You'll see that information in the description of the video. So here. At this change show, I had the awesome privilege of talking to some of God's gifted authors and hearing about their story. So let's support these authors by purchasing their book and then sharing the information on all your social media platforms. So if each one of us will help one, then we all can be successful. So a little bit about myself. I am Bertha Oxendine. Uh, for those that had not seen our show before. I am Bertha Oxendine. I am a certified life coach. I'm an encourager. I'm a pastor, a mother, and an international best-selling author. So today we have with us Mrs. Janice Matt Down. We're going to go ahead and bring her to the stage. Hello, God bless you. So glad to have you with us today here on the exchange show glad and to be here so glad to have you and miss trinice um is it okay to just call you miss trinice yes okay and her last name is mcdowell but i'm gonna let her tell you something about herself tell us about you okay so i'm trinice mcdowell and if you haven't seen coming to america y'all know lisa mcdowell so yes those are my camp people <laughs> <laughs> uh but seriously um i'm a sister i'm a daughter i'm a niece i'm an aunt cousins to many and friends to even more and uh to some amazing people um i i say that i'm a billboard for jesus and a All blueprint right. for some of his people and i've just been given opportunities to do that through books uh courses being able to speak Actually, last year, just did a hundred prison workshop tour with eight other educators who were formerly incarcerated. And we were able to go in and share our stories and just share resources and practical tools of what we use to become successful now. And uh, mm -hmm. that was amazing. And we have a documentary, hopefully coming soon, that will be out that people can watch. Yes. Um, written books. Again, just creating content and just trying to share what's on the inside of me, trying to work it up out of me and share with others. Well, that is so great. Well, we're so glad to have you today. And you have written, uh, I know the one book that we're doing today is The Me I Never Knew. That The title of that book is really saying something, The Me I Never Knew. Tell us something about your book. So the me I never knew, uh, the benefits of self-awareness. Um, so I've been, I grew up in the church, been there probably since I came out the womb. Uh, granddaddy was a deacon, stepfather was a pastor. So I was in the church, but I was in the church, but the image of God that I had was not the God of the Bible, not the true living God. And I realized that as life went on that, Hey, wait a minute, I formed an idol and of the God that I think he is, that he's not. And so throughout my book, I talk about um, the way I saw God was a reflection of how I saw myself also. Some of my life experiences that I had that, say for instance, like my biological father not being in my, my life also made me look at God as somebody that would abandon you in the same token. So I had to realize that, no, Trinice, you're looking on the outside of your life and trying to box God up into that, and that's not who he is. Oh, that is awesome. That is so true. That's not who he is. We do 
try to box him up and we try to make him when he's the one that's created us. Oh yes, yes, and yes. Image. So um what what gave you the desire to want to write the book? I was tricked. <laughs> <laughs> so um I guess in the book I share and if the people that do read it, but I'll talk about I went to prison. Uh, not once, but actually twice, making bad decisions. And so I was at a point in my life where I was about to make another decision that would land me in the same place, getting the same results over and over again. And one day I just hopped in my car, rolled down the dirt road, and I'm like, you know, Lord, I know we, we, we've we met, we know each other, but right now I'm just feeling like you, you're not here. I don't know what's going on. I kind of felt like Gideon. You know, when he was in that wine prison, he was like, look, I've been hearing about you all my life. Where is the God that my mother, my grandmother, my father, like, where's the God that they've been talking about that do all these miraculous things? I'm mm -hmm. like, why is my life just so in shambles, right? So on that dirt road, I just was at a place of surrender. And I'm like, Lord, whatever you want me to do, whatever my life has in store, I'm, I am I want to do it because I'm tired of doing what I'm doing. And at that moment, it was like I just knew what to do. And the things that I had going on in my life, hey, I let them go, dropped them down. Of course, over through a process of going through that process. But from that point on, things changed. So I started journaling my thoughts and what was going on, those emotions of what was going on. And one day, one of my family members, my cousin, she was like, you ought to start a blog. So from my journaling, I started a blog. No one saw the blog, but my family members. But lo and behold, that blog and that journaling end up becoming the book that I wrote, The Me I Never Knew. The Me I Never Knew. A lot of times, you know, we think we know ourselves, but until God really shows us who we are and we begin to see ourselves, who he is, who he really is. So mm -hmm. what I'm hearing is, you know, a lot of times we are, we know that God is supposed to be the potter. But sometimes we jump over on the on that potter side and and we try to mold ourselves. And in your book, uh, reading some articles in your book, I I seen that you began to realize um, you took a self awareness, you, you, you a self inventory, a self discovery. So tell us a little something about you had um, you you know about you losing your direction, but then you about the detour. Yeah, so I, I think I was kind of stubborn from the jump, and at a young age, I kind of knew I was being drawn to some and pulled towards a direction that I didn't want to go. I would like I would have certain jobs, and they would offer me promotions, but I didn't want the responsibility. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. Just just keep me where I'm at. And all, throughout my life, I started seeing that pattern that when it was time for me to get more responsibility, I didn't want to do it. And uh, so throughout that process of evaluating myself and just looking within and seeing some of the thoughts that I had that weren't really true. My perspective of what was going on my, in my life wasn't true. And through the process, God was showing me, no, this is what really was going on. This is I had you this whole time molding you for where I'm trying to take you. And then he was like, this is who you are. And once I finally accepted that and said, you know, I'm not running anymore. I'm just going with it. I'm going to flow with what you tell me to do. I'm doing it. And, you know, growing up in the church, I would hear a lot about, you know, going to heaven, going mm -hmm. to hell, sins and salvation. But I never heard a lot about finding our identity okay. and our purpose. And kind of like what Jesus was like, hey, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men yeah and it what they didn't follow him because he said you could go to heaven they didn't follow him from that but they followed him because he had a better way and he was about to show them who they were and their purpose and that's that's how i feel what happened to me i was like i'm all for it this is yeah. who you said to him let's go but then on the journey it gets harder and harder i'm like wait a minute i don't know if i want this <laughs> yeah you have to come to that total surrender that surrender place of what you think is great, like the show, the exchange. You know, we when we wrote our book, the check the exchange where the show actually stands from is you know, surrendering our will for God's power. 
And uh, like you said, I, I was reading in there also, used to be in sports, used to play ball. And I mean, you wouldn't, I mean, they put you on, I don't know, I, I'm never been really a ball player, but it sounds like from what I was reading that you were really good. Yes, I was. <laughs> I and, was, and, and again, it kind of go back to, like, in my book where I talk about my coach and the way I perceived how he was trying to tell me or grow me up as a leader, I yeah. was deflecting, resisting what he was trying to right. do. I had an attitude. I'm like, why are he picking on me? Like, why are he telling me to run and do more than what everybody else is doing? But he saw something that I couldn't see. And I didn't surrender to what he was trying to do. And so when he he put us all off the team, I had that chip on my shoulder. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go and run track. I'm going to do something else. <laughs> <laughs> but um, another thing, too, um, as you were saying, you know, you decided to go and do something else because that's how we do. We decide. We start deciding instead of realizing that God placed us here for a purpose and a plan, for his purpose and his plan. But we get that big eye right up in there to do it how we think it needs to be done. So you have a chapter in your book, you said rerouting. Mm -hmm. Yes, rerouting uh, like a GPS system. Yes. It's, it's time to change the path. It's time to, of course, you know, we say repent change our thinking, change our way, change our paths. And the way I was thinking and my behavior, the way I was going was not the right way. So God allowed some things, some opportunities to happen in my life. At the time, I didn't think it was an opportunity. <laughs> I was upset about it. You know, getting ready to go to the Air Force. I have went to college. I was at UAB doing good things. But I still had, I was like one foot in, one foot out, mm -hmm. you know, and throughout that that period of time, and I ended up going to prison. And that to me was the reroute that I had because I wouldn't sit down. Okay. I wouldn't listen. I wouldn't stop. I would just continue to be so busy because I didn't want to hear what God had to say. <laughs> yes. yes. Because I knew, I knew, I, I didn't know, but. I felt I I felt the drawing. I felt the calling. And it was I continued to run. But he absolutely made me reroute. So he doesn't it's give up on him. us. Huh? That's his saying. He doesn't give up on us, does he? Absolutely not. And so when I was in prison, I talk about it in my book. I was playing basketball. <laughs> and I I I barely fell. You wouldn't have thought that I shattered my fibula and my tibula, mm. the front bone of your leg. You never would have thought it. But when I got up, my leg was like a ham hawk. Mm. And I had to get rushed to the hospital and have a immediate surgery on it to be able to keep my leg. And so in the two years that I spent incarcerated, I was mostly in the farm infirmary the whole time. So it was a, a little small box room. Your bathroom and your shower is right there in you. And it's only two steps away. And you have a window that's, I don't know, a two by two window. I don't even, I don't even know if that's a size. <laughs> so I'm in this room, couldn't see anybody. Um, I couldn't have visitations during the time that I had my surgery because they wanted to keep me away from everybody so I didn't get an, an infection. So I'm in this room and I, I had to face. I had to face myself. I had to face the man in the mirror and ultimately hear what was going on on the inside of me. And that kind of started the journey of me rerouting. Like you said, you had to face that man in the mirror at last. And yes. it's something how God can allow you to get, like you said, you didn't think you would have hurt your leg that bad. But that was just the opportunity God had given you to get you still so he could do what he wanted to do. Yes. And so that's when I look, that's when I opened up the Bible while I was in there. I started look, reading books and I started hearing, I said, this, this, this voice is so familiar to me. And mm -hmm. I knew then I said, it, it's time for me to kind of start chasing something else. Let me find the Trinice that I once knew. And ultimately I discovered a me that I never knew. 
Yes. Oh my, the me that I never knew. Some, you know, that to me, just that title, so many times we think we know ourselves when we don't know ourselves. Not like he knows us. I remember one time saying, nobody knows my story like I know my story. And he said, he said, "Uh, uh-uh. uh, nobody knows your story like I know your story. Because he's been there in situations that I didn't even know that was even coming at me where he blocked it or he directed it. So when I think about you saying about, you know, how he allowed you from prison to go into the hospital to have surgery so he can get you all to himself. Yes. So he but the, and, and then the, the, the beauty of our father is the whole time I ended up with a surgeon that said, before we go in surgery, we're, we're going to pray. And I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. And, 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 and that same surgeon left after I, after my surgery, he left and went and ended up moving somewhere. And I'm like, God, I put the right people in the right place at the right time. Mm-hmm. See, you you know who do that. You you knew who done that. You know who done yes, that. Yes. Set that all up. And that's one thing I love about him so much. He goes ahead of us and just he's got a life path, you know, out. He has it out to what he wants, uh, how he's directing our path, but it's us that choose a detour away. So we're gonna hold on just for a moment and take a brief break. Today's sponsor is I Believe God Ministries International. This outreach ministry is committed not only to spreading God's word but also to showing the love of Christ. Their desire is to help people discover their gifts and how to use them in ministry and or business. If you are looking for a ministry where you can grow spiritually in your gifts, then visit their website at www.ibelievegodministries.com. Thank you so much um, for holding on. We're we're back and we have our special guest, uh, Miss Trinice McDowell, and her book is The Me I Never Knew. The Me I Never Knew. And uh, I encourage you to, to purchase that book. Tell them how they can get, get your book. So it's cur- it's on Amazon right now. And if okay. they have a Kindle subscription, they can read it for free or they can purchase a paperback copy. Or they can look on any of my social media platforms under my name, Trinice McDowell, and they can look at the link in the bio. That sounds, that's great. So I encourage you to, to purchase a book. I've read uh, most of it, and uh, I just been really blessed. You know, sometimes you think you already know, oh, I kind of know what that's about. No, you don't until you read, because everybody's story is different, and you'd be surprised how when you read somebody else's story, how God will begin to speak to you about yourself. And um, I seen also in your book, you talked about uh, rerouting and then you talked about being ref- refueled. Mm-hmm. So talk to us a little, a little bit about being refueled. Uh, being refueled. Once God rerouted me, he started refueling me through Again, I think I spoke about I was on a search. I started seeking and searching. And so I knew I was like, well, I grew up in the church. I know this is a place I probably could go find some answers. So I went back to the church and I remember hearing a sermon about divine providence. I never mm-hmm. forget it. And the pastor was talking about how you could, God could have you in a situation. You don't think this is supposed to go on with your life, but you are actually at the right place, the right time. Everything's working for your good. And so after that sermon, I just couldn't get it out of my head and out of my spirit. And I said, let me go. Let me go just see what this divine providence and all is all about. So I, from that moment, I just started seeking and studying. And it was like, I just, I couldn't stop. I just, my appetite was just so um just desire so much for the word and just figuring out what was going on so i was getting refueled through the process he was taking me through to now be where i am today but that's how i was ended up being refueled just seeking and searching through church and i started realizing i was like wait a minute i got an incomplete version of god in my heart and in my mind and through that refueling refueling i found out I was angry with God the whole time. Mm -hmm. And he was like, until you face the fact 
that that's what's going on. And you actually expressed that to me. We can't go on and build this relationship. Beautiful. And I thought it was all of this outside stuff going on. But when the Holy Spirit spoke that to me, and I was like, you know what? You're right. That is exactly what's going on. But I, at the at the time, I was like, that's not how you're supposed to talk to God. You don't tell God you mad at him. We don't do that. <laughs> but when when I was free to know that I can express myself fully yeah. and freely, Mm-hmm. Oh, that was the best refueling ever in my life to know what I could talk to you about anything. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and he knew. He, I don't know why we think we can hide it because he already knows. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and he's like, I'm just waiting on you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I just thank him so, so much for being willing to wait. And he's not shocked by anything that comes out of our mouth. And, um, but, the me I never knew. So that just that title, the me I never knew. Getting to know who you really are. And until you know who you really are, uh, like you mentioned about knowing the location, when at the GPS actually, you know, where are you at? Mm-hmm. So what like I'm here. Adam, 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 where are you? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. So um uh what are some what are some other things that you would like to share with our um, those that are listening today. Uh, I, I, I would just like to encourage everybody to continue, continue to c- continue seeking out who God is, even though if you grew up in church and sometimes we could just believe in what everybody else is saying, but it's best to seek out their relationship for yourself. Allow whatever God wants to do in you to let him work through you and work it out for you. Uh, don't be as stubborn as me. <laughs> and surrender. Yeah. Surrender. Um, obedience is great, but surrender is better. Mm. So when you surrender, yeah. that will help you be obedient. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not it's your way. Home. It's his way. Say what? Mm-hmm. I said, and just just become who he says you are. And ultimately, for me, I'm still in the process. I still don't know who I am to the fullness. Right. But every step of the way, every stage, every phase is mind blowing. It's exciting. And then it's frustrating at times. But the journey, the journey. I I, I said like this, the process is the promise. Amen. Amen. And he has like he has that perfect plan for you when he created you from the beginning. He had a path for you to go. And as you said, we may detour, but he's got a way of bringing you right back because he got the perfect plan for us. And um, and for you to be able to write this book and encourage someone else to know. You got to get to know me. The real me, the who's inside. And that's the one that God says you are, not the one that people say that you are. Or the things that you've done, the things that you've done, that's not who you were. But it's who God says that you are. Well, we're going to get ready to wrap this up. So what you have any last words you'd like to say to our audience? Last words. Um, just keep going. <laughs> just, just keep going. Uh, hopefully soon. Once I finish the process, I'll be working on another book, uh, which is The Posture of Daughtership and Sonship. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Awesome. That is awesome. Well, I truly thank thank you for being with us today. Um, and I would encourage all of our listeners to, to purchase one of your books. I feel they will really be blessed by it and it can help give them direction. And let them know that no matter what path you choose to take, God has a perfect path for you. And he has a way of bringing you back to where he says that you should be. I know our apostle usually says, God's going to get his way, either the easy way or the hard way. But through those things that we go to through, we learn. And as you said, you are still, still getting to know the me that you never knew, which is the title of her book. So I encourage everyone to purchase one of her books. And as we wrap up the at this episode of the Exchange Show, 
I'd like to, again, thank Trudice, uh, Matt Daniel for joining us today and for each one of you all joining us. So remember to grab a copy of that book and invite someone to join the exchange community. community. And until next time, I am Bertha Knox and I pray God's abundance upon each of you. And we will see you next week for another episode of The Exchange Show. Bye. Love you.